So far you haven't seen much of the Albion Gadialt on my channel, but lately I've had an opportunity for a bit of abusive testing, which uh, you don't see yet. This is just a warm up, so to speak. We'll get to the harder stuff in a moment. So this is a late Viking sword. It's really a shape that I personally associate more with Normans, but of course that is around the time when Vikings started to become Norman. It's quite a hefty sword. The blade is significantly longer than that of other Viking swords that I've tried so far. It impressed me quite a bit when I took it out for some cutting. In fact, I'll just let you listen to exactly what I thought at the time. You know what? This thing is scary. This is probably the most powerful single-handed cutting sword I've tried so far. I haven't done the same test with the Berserker yet, so that may be a good competitor, but man does this thing cut. This piece of wood is really thick. It's almost the size of my lower legs. So if I can cut deeply into this, then yeah, this would pretty certainly go through a leg without much problem. So you can see it went almost halfway. That's pretty damn impressive, if you ask me. And there we go. Holy crap. That really didn't take much at all. Look at this. Some people may be shocked to see me treat an expensive sword like this, but it's only fair since I do abusive tests with cheaper swords and with an $880 sword, if anything, you have less to worry about because it is higher quality materials, better design, stronger assembly and all of that. And you can see quite nicely here how much it flexes. It may look weirdly floppy, but the springiness is exactly what prevents the sword from breaking or bending permanently. And it's really much more pronounced in the slow-mo footage. You don't really see the that much of it and as you handle it it doesn't really seem all that flexible but this is just what happens under impact. I had a few less than ideal cuts here that put extra strain on the blade but as you can see it handled it just fine. This is quite a massive branch and it moves barely at all because it was still attached to the fallen tree so because there is no give the sword has to absorb all of the impact. On the one hand, cutting into solid wood like this may seem excessive, and for many reproduction swords it certainly is, but at the same time you also have to keep in mind that on a historical battlefield there would be a lot of stress on the blade. The sword would clash against helmets, mail armor, would cut through bones, would hack into shields, would meet other swords, etc. etc. So it wasn't exactly treated like a decorative wall hanger. On the other hand, our modern crucible steels are far superior to what they were able to produce in historical times. It has fewer impurities and a higher carbon content. If anything, modern swords can take more abuse than historical ones. Especially moderate branches like this are pretty appropriate. It's obviously not the same as bone and it also depends on the type of wood that you're using. Here I did something that I normally don't do, which is hack right into the connection of a branch. So that's where you would have a knot, that's where the wood is toughest, and this is really a good way to damage blades generally but I felt comfortable enough with this and again, nothing at all happened. I'll show you close-ups of what the blade looks like afterwards. Until then, there's a bit more of this carnage. There's something quite satisfying about seeing a blade sink that deeply into a thick wooden branch like this. And this really didn't take many cuts at all. Back to normal speed. It really doesn't take a whole lot of strength to do that. More important really is body mechanics, performing the cut well, and the rotation in the hip is really much more important than just swinging the arm wildly. It has quite a bit of an effect. Edge alignment is of course also very important. If the edge alignment is even slightly off, you're very likely to get stuck in the wood. Not here, the edge alignment was actually pretty good. And accuracy too, I managed to hit pretty much the exact same spot. Nasty sound, isn't it? Almost there. I think I hit it almost exactly at the center of percussion. Reasonably close. And there it goes. So again, pretty thick branch. And then I decided to also try a few thrusts on a piece of mail. This is butted mail, not riveted. It's not historically accurate. 
But even so, I didn't expect to be able to thrust through it. Even the butted male is actually very strong against thrusts. I couldn't make it through. On one attempt, I missed the male, so that goes to show how powerful the thrust is. Another attempt still didn't go through. And then I tried half sorting because it generates a lot more power. But again, nothing really happened. The tip gets stuck a little bit in the rings, but since it doesn't go very deep, it's not difficult to remove it. So you can see why this type of armor was so popular. Even the weaker butted male does pretty well. And finally, a close-up of the blade. I tried to show any kind of damage, but I couldn't because there is none. Plain and simple. There is a little bit of edge wear, not even damage, just wear, which you'll see later. Otherwise, what you're seeing is just a few fingerprints, which happened to spite the gloves I was wearing, so they're obviously too thin. And a few scuff marks here and there, and otherwise there's just oil on the blade. So, as you can see, the tip is perfectly fine, despite the test against the male that's usually really hard on a blade, especially the point, even though this is a fairly thin point, but just goes to show how good the steel is and the tempering. I was actually using a magnifying glass because otherwise I wasn't able to show anything at all. Overall, this is not even worth mentioning. This is the only section of the blade that has noticeable edge wear, and even that is really minor. So basically a few strokes with a whetstone and it's all good, and I don't even think it's necessary. Anyway, hope you like these tests and thanks for watching.